you've been journeying with us past four Sundays, we've been going through the season of Advent, and now we're here on Christmas Eve on the verge of the celebration of the arrival of Jesus, our Savior, the light of the world, Emmanuel, God with us. And as you know by now, Advent is a season of expectant waiting as we focus and reflect on Christ's coming. His coming to earth that very first Christmas long ago and his eventual triumphant return to earth to complete God's ultimate work of redemption in the future. In celebration, each week of Advent, we have focused on a different aspect of God's character, his hope, the peace, the joy, the love, which is offered to us in the Christ child. So we have discovered that the Christmas story is a powerful, inspirational, transformational story filled with wonder and miracles and, yes, real life. It is the story of God with us, Jesus, come to earth to be the most wonderful gift of all eternity. The first Christmas, you see, God gifted us with himself in Jesus Christ. Over the course of my life, Christmas has been celebrated with the giving of gifts, and I surmise that for many of you, it was likewise. And I can remember when I was a young child on Christmas Eve, our family, we would go together to church just like you are attending church with us this evening. And after church, we'd go to some family get-togethers, and those would run pretty late, and I remember not being able to keep my eyes open any longer and falling asleep. I remember my dad throwing me over his shoulder and carrying me out along with my sister, who also had fallen asleep, and placing us in the back of our station wagon. Do you remember those? Yes. Momentarily, on the way home, I would awake, and I would be looking up through the back of that station wagon window as I would lay there in the back, and I would catch, think I could catch maybe a glimpse of Santa Claus flying over, dropping off presents somewhere. See, I really enjoyed that feeling because as I was lying there, I knew that once I got home, if I just found a way to get myself to go to sleep, then very early in the next morning, I would wake up, and maybe at 5.30 in the morning, I mean, that, that, that wasn't, you know, that was late enough. I could get up at 5.30, I could wake up, and I could see all the incredible gifts that were being given that Christmas day. I mean, we really do like to receive gifts, don't we? I certainly did as a child. Think about your favorite gift that you received that, or some favorite gift that you have gotten and just think back. We did this over at the Colonnade with our members over there and we went around the table and I was amazed at how many people said that their favorite Christmas gift was a bicycle. A bicycle. Take time to think tonight of your favorite gift. Might be years ago, but... Whatever it is, it still can bring a little bit of joy to your heart as you think about that. I can think of one gift that was, was one of my best and also one of my worst gifts ever at the same time. I was probably about six years old, and I received a battery-powered tank that would run on its own. I mean, that was so cool that it would run on its own. And I could set up books, and it would plow over the books, and I could set up other barriers, and it would knock it down. And you know what it would do? It shot little plastic bullets. Now, you can't buy tanks like that today because they tell you you'll shoot your eye out, and it's not politically correct. I understand. But I had fun with it. I would play all these games throughout Christmas with it, but it was the worst gift also because, you know, it wasn't made very well, and before the day was over, someone playing with it broke it. <laughs> So we love getting presents, don't we? And thinking about those presents can bring a, a little bit of joy to our hearts. Of course, in order to receive, there must be givers. And I don't know about you, but the more I've matured, the more I enjoy giving gifts. It makes my heart glad. Now, I don't like to go to malls. I have to admit, I really don't care for that a whole lot. I'll go to Kohl's maybe twice a year. And I will enter the mall just one time around Christmas to do one day of shopping. But boy, I sure like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Just sit at your computer, order it, and they bring it to you. Well, we like to get gifts. But particularly as we grow older, we love to give them as well. 
And that's part of what we enjoy about Christmas. The, the gift I have appreciated the most and are the special gifts that people have given. Gifts that people have done for me, for me and Kathy, for, for the boys. Things that have been done that we could not have done by ourselves. Maybe you've heard of the gift of the white envelope. It's a real-life story recounted by Nancy Gavin in the December 14, 1982 issue of Women's Day magazine. The, the title of the article was For the Man Who Hated Christmas. Let me share Nancy's thoughts as I read her words. It was just a small white envelope stuck among the branches of our Christmas tree. No name, no identification, no inscription. It, it has peaked through the branches of our tree for the past 10 years. It all began when my husband, Mike, hated, who hated Christmas, uh, said, you know, I don't hate the true meaning of Christmas, but I hate the commercial aspects of it, the overspending, the frantic running around at the last minute to get a tie for Uncle Harry and the dusting powder for Grandma, gifts given in desperation because he couldn't think of anything else to give. Knowing he felt this way, I decided one year to bypass the usual shirts and sweaters and ties and so forth, and I reached for something special just for Mike. The inspiration came in a very unusual way. Our son Kevin, who was 12 years old that year, was on the wrestling team at the school which he attended, and shortly before Christmas, there was a non-league match against a team sponsored by an inner-city church. These youngsters from the inner city dressed in sneakers so ragged that the only thing that seemed to hold them together was the shoestrings, presented a sharp contrast to our boys in their spiffy red and black uniforms and sparkling new wrestling shoes. As the match began, I was alarmed to see that the other team was wrestling without headgear, a kind of light helmet designed to protect wrestlers' ears. It was a luxury the opposing team obviously could not afford. Well, we ended up walloping them. We, we took every weight class. My husband, Mike, seated next to me, shook his head sadly. He said, I wish just one of them could have won. They have lots of potential. But losing like this could take the heart right out of them. Mike loved kids, all kids. He also enjoyed coaching, Little League football, Little League baseball, Little League lacrosse. And that's when the idea for his present came to me. That afternoon, I went to the local sporting goods store and bought an assortment of wrestling headgear and shoes and sent them anonymously to the inner city church. And on Christmas Eve, I placed a small white envelope on the tree, the note inside telling Mike what I had done, and this was his gift from me. My smile was the brightest thing about Christmas that year, and that same bright smile lit up succeeding years. For each Christmas, I followed the tradition. One year, sending a group of mentally handicapped youngsters to a hockey game. Another year, a check to a pair of elderly brothers whose home had burned down just before Christmas, and so on and so forth. The white envelope became the highlight of Christmas. It was always the last thing opened on Christmas morning. And our children, ignoring their new toys, would stand with wide-eyed anticipation as their dad lifted the envelope from the tree to reveal its contents. The story, however, doesn't end there. You see, we lost Mike a year ago due to a dreaded cancer. And when Christmas rolled around, I must tell you, I personally was wrapped in grief. But Christmas found me placing an envelope on the tree. And the next morning, I found it was magically joined by three more. Unbeknownst to the others, each of our three children, for the first time, placed a white envelope on the tree for their dad. And it looks like the family tradition will continue. Now, what truly speaks to me about this real-life Christmas story is how the Gavin family found such inspiration in gifting others was something they couldn't do for themselves. As I look back over the year 2018 and the other years before that I've spent with this congregation and the gifts that you have given to people who had not and could not, I think of Habitat for Humanity, homes that you have built. I think of the turkeys and the food and the towels and the socks and even underwear that you have given. I think of the missionaries you have supported and the gifts we have sent around the world. I think of the scholarships that you have presented so that a young person could receive an education. I think of the children that you have sponsored through the Angel Tree projects and the arcs that you have given through the Heifer Project. I think of the quilts that are so lovingly made 
by such caring hands that eventually would wrap a person in love. And I could go on and I could go on and I could go on, but I know that this congregation expresses their generosity on account of the love that they have experienced from God. But here's the thing. The wonderful thing about this congregation is how you care about others, especially in their time of hurt and despair, and you pray for them, and you provide what is needed, something they couldn't do for themselves. This Christmas, think about your favorite gift. Your favorite gift to receive, your favorite gift to give. And when I do, I realize that in this time of my life, my favorite gift this year is my family being with me. My immediate family, Kathy and Michael and Benjamin and Hope. Yes, there's Christmas gifts under the Christmas tree this Christmas, but the greatest gift for me, I'd get rid of all those just to have my family with me. And I have another family too, our church family. And as I have already mentioned, you have done some incredible gifting throughout the years, but the most important gift of all is sharing life with all of you. Now, the ideas of gifting that I share with you tonight did not begin with me, and they did not begin with you. For no matter how great the gifts are that we receive, no matter how great the gifts are that we give to one another, they are never as great as the gift that only God could give us. God who did for us what we could not do for ourselves. For the truth is that the gift that we should really remember at Christmas, every Christmas as well as every day throughout the year, is the gift that God gave all of us that first Christmas. Jesus Christ is God's Christmas gift to you. And yet some of us have gone Christmas after Christmas after Christmas, and we've never opened the best and the most incredible gift of all, God's gift of salvation. Why even celebrate Christmas if you're not going to open the biggest and best gift? Does it make sense to leave unwrapped the gift of your past forgiven, a purpose for living, and a home in heaven? God's gift offered to you in the babe, in the manger, Jesus Christ. See, God has made a way for you this Christmas to be right with him. And all you have to do is receive his gift of salvation offered to us in the birth, life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Romans 5, 1, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. Titus, in the New Testament, says, God's readiness to give and forgive is now public. Salvation is available for everyone. We're being shown how to turn our backs on a godless, indulgent life and how to take on a God-filled, God-honoring life. This new life is starting right now and is whetting our appetites for the glorious day when our great God and Savior Jesus Christ appears. He offered himself as a sacrifice to free us from a dark, rebellious life into this good, pure life, making us a people he can be proud of, energetic in goodness. In John 3, 16, which we read earlier, for God so loved the world that he gave the greatest gift of all, his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him, and those who believe in him are not condemned. Now, I will honestly admit that the birth of the Christ child on Christmas was not always my favorite gift. There was a time when life and Christmas was really all about me, or at least that was what I thought. But one Christmas when I was a teenager, it began to sink in that life and Christmas are first and foremost about a relationship with God. It was shown to me that my selfishness and my other sins had made a mess of my relationship with God, and I wanted to fix it. I wanted to be a part of God's family. But I realized I couldn't fix it. I needed a Savior. And that's when it was revealed to me that God has made it possible for me to have a relationship with him, just like he's made it possible for you to have a relationship with him as well. God did for me what I could not do for myself when he came to this world in the babe in the manger. And by his life, death, and resurrection, he forgave my sins, gave me a purpose for living, and promised me a home in heaven. That's the most precious gift any of us can receive at Christmas. 
So I want to pray a prayer with you tonight that was much like the prayer that I prayed when I was a teenager long ago, one Christmas Eve, when I expressed to God my desire to trust and serve him with my life. I pray this prayer with you. I hope maybe tonight or tomorrow you would pray your own prayer. Pray with me, please. Dear God, I'm scared, but I want to get to know you. I don't understand it all, but I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you were with me even when I didn't recognize it. I thank you that you have always been there for me, and that you didn't send Jesus to condemn me, but to save me. Today I want to receive the Christmas gift of your son, and I ask you to save me from my past, from my regrets, from my mistakes, from my sins, from my bad habits, from my hurts, and from my hang-ups. I mean, save me from myself. I ask you to save me for your purpose. I want to know why you put me on this planet, and I want to fulfill what you made me to do. I want to learn to love you and to trust you and to have a relationship with you. I need peace with you, God, and I need you to put your peace in my heart. I need you to take away the stress and fill me with your love. Help me be a peacemaker and help others find peace with you and each other. In your name I pray. Amen.